This is Christopher Cernike, hosting episode 20 of season 2 of the Current Topics in Science podcast. This podcast will address breaking scientific news in light of the origins debate and host interviews with scientists. This podcast is available on the following platforms, iTunes, Stitcher, Google Podcasts, Spotify, and iHeartRadio. Video recordings of the podcast will be uploaded to YouTube. Enjoy the podcast. What's the highest number anyone has ever counted to? According to the Guinness World Records website, Jeremy Harper from the United States of America counted for approximately 16 hours a day, finally reaching 1 million on the 14th of September that year, a total duration of 89 days, and averaging just over 11,200 numbers per day. You would think that Count Dracula would give him a Medal of Honor, but at least he made it into the Guinness World Records. And while Harper did make it in to the Guinness World Records for counting to a million, who should have the world record, if you will, for recognizing the process of natural selection? According to Vice World News, Islamic scholars deserve that recognition. According to author Shayla Love, a thousand years before Darwin, Islamic scholars were writing about natural selection. Love cites the work of New York University professor James Higgum, who makes the claim that Islamic scholarship, especially that of Al Jahais, proposed something like evolution by natural selection a thousand years before Darwin. Professor Higgum proposes that in Al Jahais's book on zoology called The Book of Animals, he touched on various subjects, such as competition over finite resources, adaptation in response to the environment, and speciation over time as an outcome, and thus looks at Al Jahais's work as pre-Darwinian views on natural selection. The rest of the article outlines several other instances of evolutionary ideas, such as the idea that humans share a common ancestor with monkeys, appearing in Muslim literature and scholarly works. It's amazing how the concept of natural selection predates Charles Darwin's book on the origin of species by means of natural selection or the preservation of favored races in the struggle for life. While this fact is interesting, it naturally begs the select question, what is natural selection anyway? For a definition, we turn to Dr. John Sanford, who obtained his PhD in plant breeding and plant genetics from the University of Wisconsin. He's the inventor of the gene gun, holds a position at Cornell as a courtesy associate professor, and is author of the book, Genetic Entropy and the Mystery of the Genome. In his own words, here is Dr. John Sanford explaining what natural selection is. Everybody talks about natural selection, and they kind of almost imagine like it's a magic wand, it's an explanation for everything. Natural selection is simply differential reproduction. In all living systems, in all population, some individuals reproduce more than others. That is natural selection. So we can see from Dr. Sanford that natural selection is simply differential reproduction. This raises the question, what are the limits of natural selection? Can natural selection truly spur the process of evolution as Darwin viewed it? Dr. Jonathan Sarfati says, evolution of the fish to philosopher type requires that non-living chemicals organize themselves into a self-reproducing organism. All types of life are alleged to have descended by natural ongoing processes from this simple life form. For this to have worked, there must be some process which can generate the genetic information in living things today. As we can see, the evolutionary theory would need a mechanism to explain the origin of information. However, is natural selection, coupled with mutation, a suitable engine of evolution? Let's ask Dr. David Catchpool who obtained his Ph.D. from the University of New England and who has published in numerous technical papers, such as the Australian Journal of Agricultural Research, 
Here's Dr. Catchpool in his own words. The first time that I saw a creation presentation on natural selection, I was just amazed at my blindness prior to that in not realizing that natural selection can only operate on whatever is existing and it can only operate to remove what is existing. And so the realisation that it doesn't actually produce new genetic information uh, was an absolute bombshell to me. So we can see from Dr. Catchpool that natural selection is not a sufficient mechanism for particles to people evolution. However, some have proposed that perhaps, given enough time, mutation and natural selection will eventually amount to the changes required for the Darwinian theory. Let's look at the writing of Dr. Carl Weiland to see whether or not it really is the case that time is the holy grail of the evolutionary theory. Dr. Weiland uses an interesting analogy of a train to describe natural selection and mutation, saying, I tell audiences, it's not the amount of change, but the type or direction of change. It's not just that the train has not gone far enough but that it's headed in the wrong direction. In other words, populations can change and adapt because they have a lot of information, variety, in their DNA recipe. But unless mutations can feed in new information each time there is variation or adaptation, the total information decreases as selection gets rid of the unadapted portions of the population some information is lost in that population. Thus, given a fixed amount of information, the more adaptation we see, the less potential for future adaptation. The train is definitely heading downhill, destined to fall off the jetty of extinction. So, in other words, time is the death knell for the theory of evolution, because natural selection and mutation over time leads to extinction, not evolution. So if natural selection cannot be looked at as the engine of the evolutionary train, is there an alternative model, one with a competitive edge, that the symphony of natural selection better harmonizes with? According to Carl Linnaeus, the father of taxonomy, natural selection fits with the biblical model of origins. Edward Blythe, a special creationist who in his own words believed God created all things, wrote several papers on natural selection 25 years prior to the release of Darwin's book. But wait, isn't the process of natural selection incompatible with the biblical model? Well, we've already seen that natural selection isn't a sufficient mechanism for the evolutionary theory. So let's take a look at the work of Dr. Robert Carter, a biblical creationist. In an episode of the Origins program entitled Big Problems with Natural Selection, Dr. Carter said, I can happily accept natural selection as mathematical and real in the real world without having to be an evolutionist. So. As a biblical creationist, Dr. Carter is perfectly fine with acknowledging the reality of natural selection, but he takes a step further than that. He goes on to say how the biblical model can account for natural selection. In the same episode of Origins, Dr. Carter stated, there's also an example in the Bible of natural selection. After Jacob had been working for his father-in-law for many years, he decided he wanted to build up his own wealth. Jacob's flock grew phenomenally, and it was all the spotted ones, starting from a white flock. So he, Jacob, went through an artificial selection scenario. He changed the species. He changed the coat color. And coat color is a very important thing. Polar bears have white coats on purpose. Black bears wouldn't do very well in the woods if they had white coats. So here we have in the Bible an extreme example of change in color of a species over time through, in this case, artificial selection. So of course things can change. There's an example right there of things changing. From this quote, we can see that it's the Bible 
that deserves the world record for first recognizing the process of natural selection. Before you go, those clips of Dr. Sanford and Dr. Catchpool are from Creation Ministries International's award-winning documentary, Evolution's Achilles Heels. Check out the links in the description to get Evolution's Achilles Heels at a sales price. Thank you very much for taking the time to learn with us on current topics in science, where scientific discoveries are examined in light of the origins issue. Please share and subscribe to the Current Topics in Science podcast. It's available on iTunes, Stitcher, Google Podcasts, Spotify, and iHeartRadio. Thanks again for listening, and remember, the truth saves.